Another critical piece to Kant's ethics is that moral theory and morality in general tells you what you should be doing, what you ought to be doing, and what you ought not to be doing. That is, you have duties to do certain things and duties not to, to refrain from doing certain things, and morality tells you that. And how does it tell you that? It tells you that by what we ordinarily think of commandments. Don't murder. Don't lie. Don't kill. Keep your promises. Commandments. Commands. Things to do. Or sometimes we call these, and in all the translations of Kant, they're referred to as imperatives. You might go back to your days in elementary school when your teachers told you that there are really four basic kinds of questions. First, excuse me, four basic kinds of sentences. A declarative sentence that describes the world. An interrogative sentence, which is a question. Why should I go there? Then there are exclamatory sentences. When you stub your toe and you said, Oh, my God, or whatever you're filling the blank in, that's an exclamatory. But the, the other kind of sentence, which you usually heard earlier on, is something called an imperative sentence, which would be like what a, uh, the sergeant in the army tells his soldiers. Attention! Do this, do that, or maybe Simon says you hear. So there are imp com imperatives or commandments, and we're going to see the morality is a a set of laws, a moral law, a set of rules that command us to do things and to refrain from things. And to get it, which of these imperatives are the moral imperatives? Kant points out that ought. The word ought is used in two different ways in English. You know, we might say something like this. If you want to go to law school, then you ought to take the LSAT, the law school admission test. Or if you want to be a nurse, then you have to take the, I think it was the TES or something, whatever. There's a, there's a, a test. Now, that is what we're calling a hypothetical that's what we're calling a hypothetical imperative. That is, what you should do if, in order to accomplish a certain goal. That is, if your goal is to go to law school, you ought to take the LSAT, because if you don't take the law school admission test, you're not going to get admitted. But we call this hypothetical because it's not telling you to do it no matter what. It's telling you if you have a certain goal do this. And sometimes when you'd say you ought to take the LSAT, you mean it hypothetically. It's only if you're trying to accomplish something. By contrast, Kant would point out when somebody says you ought not to kill or you ought not murder, you might say they're saying something that's a categorical imperative. That is, what they mean by this is what you have to do regardless of your goals. As you might say, oftentimes when a member of Congress or a witness is uh, being questioned about something, they're, and they're, they're saying absolutely, they're not, they're not uh, what they're saying is true, for example. They say, what I said is, you know, I said that categorically, meaning this is the way it is. It's not dependent on anything. It's not going to change tomorrow. It's categorical. So something like you ought not kill ought in this sense is using a categorical sense of ought or and it's expressing a categorical imperative. Now don't confuse this with the categorical imperative, which is something that we'll find out about very very shortly. But Kant makes the claim, well, he sort of makes two important claims. The first one is that the only way there can be hypothetical imperatives is if there are at least some categorical ones, meaning there has to have to be some categorical imperatives.